Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Green Wisdom Health Show. I'm Janet Lewis. And I'm Dr. Lewis. And we are going to educate you today a little bit about allergies and seasonal problems. And the name of this show is called Allergy Relief and Seasonal Defense. Because so many of you now are suffering with allergies this time of year. Or maybe it's a cold. Or maybe you're getting the flu. Or maybe you don't know the difference. So we're here to tell you today what the differences are, and what you can do about it and help keep your immune system up and going and hopefully get through this wonderful season we are coming into without getting sick. So, Dr. Lewis, would you please da -da -da, <laughs> tell us what to do to stay well? Well, first of all, uh, many people have lost their belief that your body has anything to do with the immune system. They, they've gone into believing that uh, good health comes from the outside in, like a drug inside. And I'm not anti-drug, but I'm conservative about it. We have to get back to the correct thinking of your body has an immune system. Even George Carlin, in his uh, wild and crazy humor, said, what do you think you have an immune system for? So we we have to realize that we do have an immune system, but it requires a certain amount of material in order to function properly. And we've gotten out of that uh, belief. And it's really, you've, you've got to have oil in my truck. You've got to have gas in my truck in order to make it go. And we realize, oh, I have to continually put you know, gas in it, change the oil once in a while to make it function properly. But yet we treat our bodies much worse than we do our pickup trucks down here in Texas because everybody's got a pickup truck, right? Uh, Janet called me a redneck this morning, so I had to go there. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, selective memory. Uh, asthma and allergies. You know, the respiratory tract, you have to realize it kind of begins in the sinuses, nose, and throat, continues down the trachea, goes into, you know, a tube to the chest that leads to the lungs. We have a thing we hadn't planned to talk about, but we have a... I, Ear, nose, and throat probiotic for those of you that have chronic sinus problems and sore throat. We do have one specific for that that really will kick butt and take names. And people say, oh, my God, it's a miracle. Uh, so, And it's called ENT probiotic. I thought I'd bait them and make them call me. Mm. I like talking. Janet doesn't understand that because she talks too much. Uh, more than she wants to. She didn't talk too much. She just doesn't want to. Uh you know, the reason we have so many sinus problems, I think, is because that's where the air goes through and it filters some of the particulate matter that you shouldn't be getting down into your lungs and it warms the air, you know, especially when it gets kind of, you know, cooler and puts a challenge on your immune system. And I've always been a different type thinker, good or bad, you can judge that, but my mother would say, get out of the rain, you're going to catch a cold. And I said, I take a bath every day, I get wet, what's the difference? Yeah, I got my butt spanked a time or two for, you know, saying things like that. I was pouring milk in my soup because it's too hot. She says, you don't need to do that. And she says, they're starving children in China. I said, well, box that stuff up and ship it to them. I did get my butt beat for that. Had to get my own switch. So I always think differently. If you have this, what's the underlying cause? And I would like for you to start thinking the same way. And again, oh, God bless you people that just consistently do what I tell you to do. Your labs are looking better and better, although they're never going to be perfect. Don't expect that. And Pete the other day in Missouri says, I think I'm one of your longest, uh, you know, most loyal patients. He's been doing it five years, and it's like, I don't know what he looks like in person, but dang, he looks good on labs. So hope his wife appreciates how good looking he is. And you got Gary quietly in Amarillo just doing the right thing, and lots and lots and lots of others. So this should help you through uh, the coming seasons. You know, well, let me let me just jump into the research. Sorry, I was just told that I need to kind of dumb it down and not get to, as she said, don't do the deep dive. And it's like, sorry, got to. Um, one of the main sources of inflammation, it's always gut and inflammation. That's two common denominators, and I don't care what you got going on. But one of the major sources of inflammation of the respiratory tract is polluted air. Yes, it's true. You could cut the air. I mean, you could literally see the pollution in a five-star hotel in Xi'an, China. 
probably mispronouncing that name, the Forbidden City. Uh, you could see the pollution. It was absolutely horrible. It was scary. It looked like a big A-bomb cloud when we were driving into some of these cities from the airport. And the pollution's real. You know, we're talking about global warming. It, well, China and India do many, 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 many times more pollution than America. So you got to get everybody on board if you want to clean up the environment. But it's the polluted air we breathe, and that's from American Journal of Respiratory Critical Care. So yeah, that's pretty good. The immune system that I talk about is mostly in the GI tract. If it's functioning on all eight cylinders, for those of you that remember the eight cylinders, I think my truck now is six, but it's turbocharged. Most of the respiratory problems would be overcome if your GI tract were functioning correctly. Even Louis Pasteur, the who had the germ theory of disease, he said on his deathbed, if I had to do it over again, I would have emphasized the immunity of the terrain, meaning the immune system of the human, rather than the bacteria. Because if you have a good immune system, it has a way to fight that off. And I'll get into that when we talk about the mushrooms. So, you know, there's other ways that we... Uh, pollute our environment, you know, hairspray, uh, a lot of the makeup and things like that. It, it makes a big difference. And vitamin C doesn't get much press because that was 30 or 40 years ago. And it's still very, very important. And remember, they've been picking oranges with little to no vitamin C for decades. So don't think you're getting it out of your necessarily out of your oranges people say well i'm drinking wine to get my resveratrol and i say well i drink uh, screwdrivers to get my vitamin c and they think i'm funny and it's like yeah but they never think that way again they can begin to think outside the box so um for example if you're a smoker that burns up a minimum of 50 milligrams of vitamin c which is the recommended daily allowance. You've got to understand these recommended daily allowances are tiny, 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 small, not anywhere close, and that's why you have to take an overdose of all these vitamins and minerals because you're not going to absorb it all anyway. Um, so if you smoke, yeah, you really and truly ought to quit. So a uh, lack of vitamin C can uh, help lead to other inflammation and oxidation of the lungs, Journal of Lancet, um, and even if you don't smoke, you have all kinds of other uh, pollutants because passive smoke is a bad thing. Uh, at least uh, passive smoke's like a third of other, you know, like if you were doing it directly, smoking on a cigarette. Uh, one of the things, uh, it's a deep dive. I, I'm so sorry to this lady that just said I like it because you don't go into deep dives. Uh, the pollutants that we talk about and pesticides in the air folks you think you're not getting a big dose of pesticides you are or herbicides it's it was they were spraying herbicides here on loop 281 yesterday in longview texas and it was raining i don't know why you're spraying a herbicide when it's going to wash it off but uh these pesticides are really and truly can be linked back to almost all diseases because they interfere with something called the neuroendocrine immune system. Neuro being nerve, endocrine mean the endocrine glands and the immune system. And it's not necessarily safe indoors. So I tell people to read certain books, and this lady says, well, I've been reading this book, and now I got real paranoid started having anxiety attacks. I was reading the book because we were putting – you know, new materials in a house that they were building. I said, well, you sh you know, if, if that much information gives you anxiety, just quit reading the book. I said, I've got you covered. You know, I know what I'm talking about. And she says, I know you do, but I'm going to continue to read the book. I said, well, then you've got to get on something that's anti-anxiety. Don't do it. Folks, you've got to decrease stress wherever you find it. And some of it's in our own minds and how we think. You can still live happy and healthy and have more energy. I told Janet to change one thing yesterday and she did and oh my god what a difference oh my goodness you you guys you need to listen to you know you know i, I have a husband and then i have dr lewis 
uh, fortunately for me. One of them's more fun than the other one. <laughs> I can't figure out the difference between the two, but I am very blessed to have them both in different uh, areas of my life. Yesterday, he was my doctor, and, um, you know, we do our labs pretty frequently. I don't like being poked, you know, and I hear that a lot of times. People go, I don't want to get my blood drawn. I just hate that needle business. Well, we did it because I was trying to learn for these new lab tests that we're looking into. We wanted to be a guinea pig and try it on ourselves, so I did. And uh, my lab came back, and I thought, there's a reason why we tell you guys to get your lab tested again because things change, and you think you have it all figured out, and you think you just keep going down the same way you're going, but you don't feel exactly great. You don't know why. You think, well, the things we put you on aren't exactly working like they should when in fact there may have been some things in your lab that have changed that you would not know unless you ran it again, which in my case, that was the instance. I have been taking something for my thyroid for years at the amount I've been taking it, and it has been fine. Well, this time, for whatever reason, it wasn't even near being enough. It's and called stress, and it may be a good stress, but that's what cratered that for her it been, and so dr lewis told me to increase my thyroid uh stuff that i was taking and i did it because i take it i tell people you can take it anytime after three in the morning it's called gta which you have to be a patient to get and um i took it at three o'clock because i woke up at three o'clock and I have been really dragging, tired. I mean, by about 3 in the afternoon, it's like, let, let's just let this day be done. I'm, I'm really tired. I need to go home. And, and from that point on, I, I need about 10 hours sleep a night just to be ready for the next day. And I thought, well, it's, it's probably my iron. You know, everybody thinks it's something that other than what it is. But when um, I increased the GTA this morning at 3 o'clock, in 30 minutes, it was like something came over me and I was back. And I thought, Oh, my God, I'm so glad I did what he told me to because I didn't want to take that much of it. And he said, I'm telling you, if you just try it, he said, I think that it's going to make a huge difference. And it's like somebody has turned my lights back on. So, you know, make sure that you follow someone's protocol that you trust and do the things that they tell you to do in the timely manner that they suggest because it is in your best interest to not have to feel bad for an extended amount of time and not know why. So that's my story. So thank you, Dr. Lewis and husband, for being as wonderful as you are. Yeah, I love it when you call me doctor. <laughs> um, you know, the allergies, you know, that's maybe, let's call it an inappropriate response to the body's immune system. We can get overly responsive and we we have more autoimmune diseases than i've ever seen a lot more than we had 10 years ago that or at least there's more coming in the office so for whatever that's worth maybe there's no more in the world but god's sending more of them to us because we're better equipped knowledge-wise to fix them i don't know um it's a pretty complex the immune system is a pretty complex uh system to help us fight the infections and the inflammatory markers and some of the things we're going to talk about helps the white blood cells and mobilizes the white blood cells to fight them. And one of the things on Janet's lab, which we're not sure it's real, but her white blood cell count is a 2.4, which is scary, scary low. And That's the reason why I might be tired. Yeah, and we have so many people that we're seeing with a low white blood cell count. And, you know, I link it back to musculoskeletal stuff. If one thing's falling, the rest of it's, you know, just just like dominoes. We have a product that we're going to talk about, and I really and truly think it's going to help with white blood cell count. I just saw this yesterday on a airline pilot that moved down to Bloomberg, Texas. I love talking to that guy. He's, he's hilarious in a, in a good way. But his white blood cell count came up from an alert to almost somewhat reasonable but sometimes the white blood cells they'll overreact and that creates more damage than the invader itself uh that's uh the allergic response becomes the disease so to speak and it it goes beyond nasal congestion coughing wheezing itching uh, uh, soreness of breath headaches fatigue hives It, it goes beyond that but that's the symptoms that we you know normally would would notice one other thing, you know, women during this time of year, especially women, uh, get dark circles under their eyes. Oh. And 
you re- <laughs> and you correlate that to allergies, and it very well could be. Sometimes it's a gluten problem. Sometimes it's a nut problem. Um, the nut you're married to. Sometimes it's an alcohol proto- <laughs> uh, problem. <laughs> Choked on that one. Um, yeah, you're going from preaching to getting personal. So. But the other thing it can be is also your thyroid, believe it or not. It yeah. can actually make your face puffy. So I had been noticing for about two months now, it was like, oh, my gosh, I couldn't buy enough wrinkle skin cream, dark, darkening, you know, lightening things, unpuffy things, trying to make my face look less puffy. And I couldn't figure out why. So uh, having the revelation of the thyroid being a little bit sluggish in range, but sluggish, um, I really think it's going to make a huge difference in how my eyes look. It can also be low potassium, and you usually have super high or super low, depending on what your adrenal glands are doing based on how you're handling stress. And Janus the, potassium is usually low, too. And the other thing that I've added in, which we are really excited about, is our cat's claw. Because, you know, you've heard of, maybe you haven't heard of cat's claw. I don't know. It's huge for immune system. It's huge for DNA repair. Um but our particular cat's claw, people say, oh, well, these products don't matter. You can get this anywhere. Hey, I'll go buy some cat's claw. They'll say the brand doesn't matter. It's like, well, yeah, all women are alike, men. Why do you have a crazy ex? Because all women are not alike, and neither are these supplements. Yeah, we have the patented AC11 that's in cat's claw which is a powdered bioactive rainforest plant extract. And, and, and that does 90% of the work. So when you're getting something from somewhere else, you're only getting about 10% of the power that you normally would. So when you're getting ours, you're getting a, a 90% increase or whatever that is statistically. I'm not a mathematician. but So you're saying who cares whether it's got AC11 in it. Well, here's why you should care why it has AC11 in it. It's been shown to help the body's natural ability to repair your DNA. Hmm. And women out there, uh, the studies show that it's unique product in it. Only, not only enhancedly, not, I can't even no, speak no, no, no. today. It, enha- <laughs> it significantly enhances the body's natural ability to repair damaged DNA and also measurably improves natural collagen type 3 production in the skin. Think less wrinkles and less aging. You know, she started stumbling when she stumbled over alcohol, which we'll get to in a minute. Well, that was one of our questions that we're going to come <laughs> up to later about what do we eat. They asked what we ate. So um, anyway, cat's claw, which is another a big one for immune system as well. It also demonstrates a positive effect on lymphocytes, increasing their lifespan by implication, enhancing the body's immune system. Increasing lymphocytes means, you know, that's usually the one that is more used for viruses and uh, yeast, but somewhat uh, bacteria also. So if you've got a longer lifespan, they can do more work. And I also wanted to talk about running the allergies where uh, people have runny noses and their eyes are itchy and watery and and they can't stop it. It's like a faucet they can't turn off. Uh, we have a, a product that we are using that we absolutely go- love called Histaplex. And it actually goes in and dries up the sinuses because, you know, it's that time of the year where you think, hey, I'm going to open the windows up and get a little breeze in here. And, and you get the ragweed, golden right. rod pollen. And yeah, and then from where it's been wet outside, you're getting the mold spores and things that you're breathing in also. So your um, your allergies start bothering you. But there's actually a product that helps dry it up. And I, I literally take one of these at bedtime and wake up with no allergies, where I used to always wake up with allergies. But it also works on uh, a lot of the foods that cause a histamine reaction. So you can take it because it has the quercetin dihydrate in it. Sting and nettle, bromelain, and we do have a straight quercetin bromelain that we're getting some really, really good results with. And then, Dr. Lewis, I wanted you to talk a little bit. You know, we don't ever say get the flu vaccine, don't get the flu vaccine. We're only going to tell you that the flu vaccine is not enough. If you take just the flu vaccine and expect to be healthy and not get sick, you, you're you kind of not grasping the point of taking care of the immune system so i wondered if you would talk a little bit about what we have for immune system um what we're getting in for the immune system right 
and uh, tell people what they can kind of do to help stay well and what they should be, you know, you know, like vitamin C, D, vitamin D, what what things do you recommend? Yeah, you know, and one one thing people are always trying to do it correctly, I mean do it perfectly and they create more stress, which is worse than just eating the thing. We'll get to that when we uh, uh answer Kelly and Donna's question, but yeah, you know, one of the things is uh medicinal mushrooms. They're absolutely incredible. It's in our immune essentials and that's what I think is going it's kind of new we think is going to raise the white blood cell count on people that have it down two three four and it needs to be a six seven eight you know it's got stuff in it and you know well-researched stuff like turkey tail it's it's uh, uh from turkey tail mushrooms and that's really really important in cancer treatment in several different countries so, and there's a lot of trials going on for colorectal gastric lung cancers and it says that uh, turkey tail can boost the immune system function, improve survival in these patients. Well, if we if it does that for cancer, just think what it'd do for something that's uh, less threatening. And it's got the reishi mushrooms. Uh, it's a huge immune system booster also, and it helps the activity of the NK cells. That's natural killer, which has to be used to attack these things that cause the immune reaction. Sometimes it's yeast, fungus, virus. Sometimes it's just particulates that your body's overly uh, responsive to. Then cordyceps, holy cow, I love cordyceps, and it's in a lot of our different products, but it's easier just to take it in immune essentials. Uh, that uh, activates certain types of white blood cells, the, uh, I think you call them macrophages, and that's pretty seriously good. Shiitake is also good. And then there's something called agaricus mushroom or blasia. And it's used for uh, in a lot of different places with can- for can- people that have cancer, type 2 diabetes, high cholesterol, and the so-called hardening of the arteries or uh, atherosclerosis, uh, hepatitis B, digestive problems, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease. And it does reduce side effects uh, due to cancer chemotherapy. No, I don't get into the whether you should or should not be vaccinated. That's a individual uh decision uh, you know either way but there's a question if you will read in journal of epidib epidemiology so i can't even say it but i can read it oh good i'm not the only one today journal well we'll talk about alcohol in a minute journal of the american medical association both of those raise the question about vaccines may may increase asthma and allergies so this is coming from pretty high places that saying vaccines might actually increase your allergies and asthma so well and we've got from pretty reputable sources here that taking two of these a day will help prevent flu during this whole season like these people weren't getting the flu at all now do we know that for sure yet no because we've just started carrying it and are we doing it yes so we're taking two per day and, um, we can't sell it if we don't own it in right, our heart, folks. Right. And we're, so we're going to go through this flu season, and we're going to hope to prevent it. We also have another product that we are uh, getting labeled right now. We think it will be called Vira Protect, and it's going to have the elderberry and the golden seal and all the things Echinacea. in it. Echinacea. All, yeah, all the things that are big for immune enhancers. So we're going to have a double-barrel backup plan. Ooh, double-barrel. I'm, I'm getting a new gun for Christmas, <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> But um, so those are those products. Uh, we also wanted to talk about another immune system one that Dr. Lewis likes very you know, well. Mycelized vitamin A. That's an absolutely incredible thing. And A is a little bit like C. It's so old and so well researched. Nobody talks about it anymore. But did you know A uh, guards against heart disease and stroke, lowers cholesterol levels, but it helps prevent night blindness. And actually, I do see better at night. I don't really like driving at night, but it's a lot easier now. Uh, it helps with sk- some skin disorders, you know, acne, enhances immunity, helps to heal the GI tract, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just a little dropper. And I think you're supposed to take one or two drops. I take the whole dadgum, you know, dropper full. So, you know, overdose and Yes, you can overdose on vitamin A, just like the other uh, fat-soluble vitamins, but I've never seen it happen. You know, the old rule of thumb is don't go over 100,000 units a day. Now they're saying don't go over 25 or don't go 
don't go over 25,000 or don't go over 12,500. I've never seen anybody overdose on this stuff. So, And then the also the staples that you know you should be doing every day are your vitamin C, which we prefer the liposomal C. Vitamin D, uh, they say between two and 5,000 units. You know, almost, no, it, you know. it takes about 8,000 to get it up above 50 on, on the average person. But it needs to be tested on lab. Right, and zinc, which uh, I think ours is a 54 milligram zinc. But Chelated, so it gets in better. So make, yeah, and like Dr. Lewis said, test it on lab. You know, that's a really great thing to say because if, uh, as we're going into this holiday season and you've not run your lab or you need to rerun a lab, um, it's probably time to do that just to make sure that everything's working on you that needs to be, which, like I said, mine was a big eye opener. Uh, but if you've never done it, we do lab across the United States, very low cost. Go to greenwisdomhealth.com, fill out the health survey. We run 12 different panels of lab for right now. The price is $298, and that includes Dr. Lewis's time. So uh, it's a pretty good find there. Um, we also want to make sure we addressed, address uh, questions for from our shooting straight group on Facebook, and if you are not familiar with that, it's a shoot apostrophe in straight with Dr. Lewis, where you can ask all kind of great things. But the one thing that uh, people were asking today, which we told them that we would address here, is uh, Kelly would like to know what a day of eating looks like with Doc and his precious Janet. And because she was so sweet to say that, we're going to address it. Yeah, well, Kelly's my cheerleader on Shooting Straight. Uh, she's from around Birmingham, Alabama. I think people would be surprised at what we eat, actually. We we eat very little, probably because we're so full of all this nutrition in here that our bodies really don't require the food. And I know mm-hmm. that sounds odd, but we actually have a lot of patients that say that they're not as hungry. Well, they try to eat more and more food, trying to get nutrients that's not in the food, and that's where a lot of the overeating comes from. So what do we eat in the what do we eat in the morning? I make us a shake made out of canary seed milk, which uh, we have a friend that that has canary seed. You probably never heard of that. It's something you feed your bird, but you can actually. He's make, about to get his website up, and it, it you really can lose weight drinking that stuff. Yes, you do, and um, it's a it's an alternative to like almond milk, or, high lipase to cut the fat, and good protein profile. And then we throw in all of our good powders, like um, Inflamacore, which um, is a protein powder. So we do the protein powder. We put our collagen in it. We dump our fish oil in it. I put everything in there I can put in there just to not swallow one more pill. I don't have a clue what she puts in there. But she, does, she does something for my brain health that actually works like gangbusters. Oh, brain uh, vibrance powder. Uh, gut yes. health, probiotics, you name it. Yes, and so and because Dr. Lewis does not swallow well because he has a genetic problem we we do a lot of powders for him and so i make those up for him and that's our breakfast and she bought into that <laughs> right and lunchtime we have a very good lunch we have several we we eat out at lunch because i have a wonderful husband that takes me out to eat every day we're not gluten free but we've certainly cut it way 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 down and we go to the better restaurants and we eat good good you know lean meats vegetables the ones that'll give you vegetables in place of the mashed potatoes or rice and honestly, at night, we don't eat much. Uh, after 6 o'clock, I found that if I eat after 6 o'clock, I really don't sleep well. Um, so, I mean, we do a few nuts or sometimes we'll do some organic popcorn or, or, or something Or maybe like an that. avocado. Uh, yeah, and an avocado. sometimes a boiled egg, you know, with a spoonful of sauerkraut. You know, but broiled small tomatoes. amounts. Oh, I, yeah. I do broiled tomatoes She's sometimes. a great cook, but she didn't want anybody to know. But people look at what we eat, and they're going, really? How do y'all, how do y'all stay alive? So. And, and then uh, Donna said, yes, including any nightcaps. Oh, yeah, nightcaps. Uh, now there is a nightcap. Well, I get uh, two limes. I squeeze one lime in each drink, you know, unless it's a huge lime. And then I put a shot of Grand Marnier in both, uh, you know, both glasses. And, and Janet, I give Chirac vodka. That's the real filtered stuff. Then I put a couple of shots of whiskey in mine, bourbon. Uh, I experiment with a lot of different ones. She sticks with the same, you know, Chirac that she likes. Then I pour uh, Perrier water on it. I prefer Coke, but I usually do Perrier because it's healthier. So, yes, we drink a little bit, not a whole lot. But that's a healthy alternative drink. I mean, honestly, because beer will make you fat and estrogen dominant and give you man boobs. 
Hmm. And I'm checking my bra right, right now. Right. So. <laughs> and 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 the if the cleaner liquor like that's better, but then people go in and put like cokes and hey. things in there that make it sweet or syrupy things. Hey, and hey, hey, hey. It, Hey. And it, that's a really, you know, <laughs> you, you shouldn't drink, but if you're going to drink, that's a cleaner way oh, to do it. A healthy drink is not bad. Way. Good Lord, people worry so much now. If you're an alcoholic, that's a that's a different thing. But uh, and, and I asked them, do you want it on uh, the answer on shooting straighter podcast? We, so we're going to do it here, uh, folks. I hope you've learned a lot. And yes, Richard is a fishing hole or a rabbit hole. I'm not sure which. So and we fell in it. So uh, <laughs> once again, we appreciate you listening to us. We hope you've learned something about allergies and can avoid the flu season and, and what to do about it. Right. And if you've got questions, we love your questions. Keep putting them on Facebook. Email us. You know anything. We we love answering them. It's a lot of fun. It keeps us entertained. Hopefully, it's entertaining you as well. And we will be here next week on the Green Wisdom Health Show. You guys have a very blessed week. Once again, our show has come to an end, but your hope in your health is only beginning. If you or a loved one are in need of a different outcome and are waiting for a brighter future, take the first step and go to our website and fill out the health survey. Please don't keep us a secret. If you know someone that could benefit from this podcast, please share this show with your friends and family. You're only one step away from a life worth living.